Hello and welcome to another sorting session. How about that? So today is Saturday and that means today according to the schedule we're supposed to be doing a game development but uh, yesterday I was busy all day so yesterday we didn't have any video and yesterday we're supposed to be having a random one-off topic so I basically decided to move that uh, topic for today. So we're going to be doing a random one-off session uh, today. And the topic of today's session is going to be implementing regular expression library. So yeah, um, a lot of programmers use regular expressions on a daily basis, but not everyone knows how they're implemented, me included. So the only thing I know about regular expressions is that usually they are compiled into some sort of like finite state machine. And then that finite state machine is executed on the string that you need to match. And then the result uh, of the of the this finite state machine uh, tells you whether it matched or not matched and also captured some capture groups and stuff like that but i never implemented that um, like myself and also i never read anything about how precisely how um you know how precisely the the uh, regular expressions are implemented so the only thing i know as I already said is that they probably compiled to some sort of finite uh, state machine and we're gonna start from there right so what i want to try to do i want to try to figure out Right, given the information I know, how to implement um, your own regular expressions. So the language of today is going to be Rust because I haven't programmed in Rust for a while. So maybe, yeah, why not? So let's quickly do that. So let's create a new file. So I'm thinking uh, since it's going to be like a, yeah, since we're probably not going to have any third party dependencies. So I'm going to just, you know, create a, a project without cargo. So it's going to be a simple uh, Rust file. Uh, and that way we're going to eliminate, uh, you know, the complexity, a little bit of a complexity. So it's an educational recreational project. It doesn't really need uh, any package management or building tool or anything like that, because you can build the entire project with just Rust C. Um, after a little bit of time, so I'm really sorry, I have a very slow hard drive, so it needs to warm up some caches. So that's why it takes a little bit uh, longer than usual. But if I restart it, as you can see, it actually compiles a little bit faster. So just need, needed to warm up some caches. Right, and we got an executable and you can just run this executable and there you go, you got a hello world. So that's pretty cool. So what is a finite state machine? Um, I don't know, do I look like a programmer or something? Let's actually Google it up. Uh, so let's go to the Chromium and see what the fuck is a finite state machine. <laughs> finite state machine. Um, mm, 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 mm. I think I'm using the wrong profile. Yeah, let me just quickly switch to a different one because I'm using DuckDuckGo in a different profile. In my secret identity, I'm using DuckDuckGo instead of Google. Uh, finite state machine. Mm, I already Googled that before. Yeah, apparently we talked about it on the stream. So it's a mathematical model of computation. Thank you very much, Wikipedia. Very cool. It is an abstract machine that can be in exactly one of a finite number of states at any given time. The FSM, so it's basically short for finite state machine, can uh, change from one state to another in response to some inputs. Uh, the change from one state to another is called a transition. Yeah, so basically you have a bunch of states and you have a bunch of transitions between those states, right? So in here, um, we have a, a model of turnstile. I hope I pronounced this thing correctly. And it can be, in, can be in two different states, locked and unlocked. And the transitions are based on different actions that you can do with this thing, right? You can put a coin or push a button. And uh, yeah, so that basically makes a transition between different states and whatnot. So um, I suppose like in Rust, you can describe different states uh, with an enumeration, right? So it's going to be something like state. Uh, right, and then here, uh, let's actually, you know, define this kind of step, state stuff. So we're going to have locked uh, and unlocked state. Uh, unlocked state. There we go. So here's the state of the turnstile. So, and transitions are basically described in terms of like events. Right, so I suppose uh, there's only two events, like pushing the bottom and um, putting a coin into this thing. So maybe we're going to actually introduce some sort of like events in here. Uh, right, so in events is going to be push and uh, coin, right? I hope I actually interpreted it correctly. 
right? So to 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 put in a coin in a slot and push in uh, an arm. Okay, that that makes sense. All right. So and I suppose you can have some sort of a function that performs the transition from one state to another one, right? So something like that. Uh, next uh, state, right? The function will accept uh, the state as an argument, right? and uh, event also as an argument and let's say that it's going to be a pure function so it's not going to modify anything it's not going to it's not going to have any side effects the only thing it will do it will uh, return the next state right and given the stream of events right given the stream of the events you'll have to call this uh, function on the current state and get the next state right so this is how basically it's going to work so let's actually try to simulate this uh, state machine right super quick so as you can see you, you can be in one of the states locked and unlocked let's actually uh you know code that we're gonna match uh state and one of the states you can have is basically state uh locked All right so it's gonna be to do uh -huh. and state unlocked mm -hmm -hmm. so if you are in a locked state and you received push you have to stay in a locked state if you are in a locked state but received coin you have to go into unlocked one okay let's actually call that explicitly so essentially uh we can now match the event that we got and if the event uh is push you stay in a locked state uh locked right if the event was coin uh you do state unlocked right so you're now unlocked Cool. If you are in unlocked and you push, uh, you put a coin, you stay in unlocked. But if you push, you then go into the locked state. Okay, so it's going to be the other way around. So event uh, push makes you go into a locked state, right? Event push makes you go into the locked state. Um, mm -mm -mm. It's kind of interesting that push always moves you. Yeah, this is a very interesting. So push always moves you into the locked state putting a coin always moves you into unlocked state that's very interesting okay uh event coin uh yeah and, and that's why these two things are kind of repeated right these two things are kind of repeated i wonder if you can <laughs> since you actually repeat these two branches can you just completely remove outer match and it's going to be the same thing, essentially, maybe. Uh, but I'm going to actually uh, code it as it is described in the diagram. So as close to the diagram as possible, right, for, for the educational and recreational purposes, because why not? So there we go. So you have states, you have events, and you have a transition function that accepts states and event and uh, transitions to the next state. All right, so uh, maybe we could code a simple program um, that basically allows you to input events and displays the current state or something like that. That would be actually kind of interesting. So let's actually quickly do that. So we're going to have the initial state and initially let's let's say that it's going to be locked. The entire thing is going to be locked. Uh, then we need to organize the loop. Um, and this is where it's going to be difficult. I don't remember how to read line by line in Rust, so I'll have to quickly. Uh, quickly look it up, uh, Rust std lib. Mm, maybe I can just Google Rust, uh, read std in line by line. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I already Googled that before. <laughs> I, I switch languages way too often to remember each individual details, to be fair, so I'm really sorry. Um, so you can actually, yeah, you can get the std in, you can lock it, and then iterate line by line. Okay, that's actually pretty pretty good uh pretty gucci i would say pretty uh, tamaguchi ah -ha -ha. okay so here is the buff read i'm not sure if buff read is really really needed in here uh but here we're uh, creating std uh, in and then we are uh getting the lines right so basically you, you can create an iterator out of std in uh and stuff like that i wonder if we can just inline this entire thing because i don't really need std in by itself right you know what i'm talking about um so okay let's try to compile this entire thing and see what's going to happen it's going to be rust c uh main rs and there we go there we go coined it's not coined all right so let me see uh, if we can uh, work with all of that. So I'm going to be running main and hello world test cool. 
I really like that. Nice, nice, nice. Mm, it would be kind of cool to also have a prompt, um, if you know what I mean. Uh, to have a prompt. Uh, and maybe if we actually change the the way we read this entire thing, maybe we can easily do that, right? A read the line. And before you read the line, you would prompt something like police, like input a command and whatnot. That would be a kind of interesting. <clears throat> Uh, so let me try to do that. So we're going to have a mutable line, right? We're going to have a mutable line. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Well, you can always do something like this, right? So before printing this thing, you're going to be doing like that. But then you'll have to repeat this thing here. And on top of that, it may not work because uh, if you have like buffered input or buffered output, rather, you should not forget to flush the standard output. Otherwise, you will never see those uh, those prompts. Right. So let's actually give it a try. Rust C main RS. I hope I didn't make any compilation errors. And I didn't. There we go. This is what I'm talking about, right? So, uh, yeah, if you do something like this, you will never see anything. But I mean, it, this doesn't really solve that problem either. So you need to know how to flush uh, STD out, right? So flush the STD out. Mm, it's a classical, classical problem, to be fair. Uh, to, so, yeah, you can do STD out flush. Uh, so, um, mm, 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 IO. Uh, std out flush uh, maybe i can i'm just thinking if now maybe makes sense to actually create a separate variable for this entire thing um okay it was not that uh, all right std print flush well yeah it should actually work but it uh, method not found on std out this is really strange is that because I didn't import something? I feel like I didn't import something. Uh, maybe I have to do it like right, uh, and maybe that will make it work. Uh, apparently I was right. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And there we go. Now we, you can see the prompt, right? So you do hello world test and so on and so forth. Right, so, um, and now after you got the line, after you got the line, uh, you may try to switch, you can try to match the line upon different inputs, All right? So you can put a coin in here, right? I'm not sure if this is how you match lines in Rust. I'm, I don't program in Rust, I'm sorry, I'm not a Rust uh, developer. Or you can push things, right? You can push things around. Let's see if this entire thing compiles. Uh, I suppose, I remember that you can match slices, so we, we may try to turn the line into a slice. Uh, so... The question has type, oh shit, okay. So this entire thing, first of all, um, returns the result. So maybe the first thing we wanna do in here, we can we wanna unwrap this entire thing and unwrapping this entire thing gives us a string, which we still cannot match. Uh, so that means we'll have to uh, match it like this, all right? Is it gonna work? Uh, expected struct string found str, huh? So can I do something like two str or something? Is that a thing I can do? Or maybe it's as str. Uh, yeah, there is as str, okay. So you can clearly see the heritage of a camel in here because in a camel, it's quite often pattern of converting types like um, int as string or something like that. So yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a camel thing to do, uh, to do like this. So we have an unreachable statement. Um, oh, okay, because to do breaks everything in here. Okay, okay. So, and we also wanna have the case when there is nothing in here. Well, in that case, we can just do something like ePrint ln uh, unknown event. Uh, so let's actually put something like this error unknown event um so unknown right so it's gonna be unknown unknown there we go cool so let's see what we have in here uh yep 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 so we can do push uh <laughs> Yeah, we hit to do, right, not implemented yet. Uh, so, and if I put some garbage in here, it says unknown event, uh, something, something. Okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> so essentially the idea here is gonna be the following. The idea here is gonna be the following. Uh, if you put a coin, you have to do something like state, next state, the current state, and the event is coin, 
right? So if you have a push, uh, the next thing in here is going to be uh, push. There we go. So and I suppose um, before printing the prompt, uh, we have to print the current state. So let's actually print it like this. Uh -huh. So state. Uh, maybe it's going to actually print this prefix. I don't know if it's going to print this prefix. But, but, but if it's going to print this prefix, it's actually pretty good. That means I will be able to remove this thing from here. But anyway, uh, so we're going to be doing that every time the state is updated. So in that way, uh, yeah, so this requires debug. Um, oh yeah, I need to do something with state. And the second one is going to be state. Uh, there we go. So, and of course, state needs to be debuggable, uh, right? Otherwise, we won't be able to print it. And derive debug, and let's put that on both of them. Okay, so result. Okay, so let's also unwrap this entire thing in case an error ha happens, right? In case an error happens, there we go. Uh, and everything compiles without even warning. Nice. Okay, so what can I do in here? I can try to push it. I push in the turnstile, right? Is this how it's pronounced? But nothing happens. So to unlock it, I have to put a coin in there. And as you can see, it got unlocked. Uh, now I try to push it and that it, it's locked again, right? And I keep trying to push it and it's still locked. But if I uh, keep uh, putting coin, it uh, stays unlocked, right? That's basically what it is. It would be actually kind of cool to have uh, like a quit event of some sort in here. I think, I think I'm going to do that. Something like quit. Um, and what do we do on quit? I suppose you just return. <laughs> There's nothing much you can do in here. Uh, just return. And there we go. So you can do push. Uh, push, coin, uh, quit, and you quit. There we go. We implemented a simple uh, finite state machine, right? Using a bunch of matches and stuff like that. But as I already noticed, right? As I already noticed, um, so I think you can just simply put an outer, uh, uh, not outer, but inner match and remove the outer one, and it's going to be the same, right? Because as you can see, no matter what's the state, uh, yeah, you always uh, you always lock when you try to push, and you always unlock when you try to uh, to put a coin. So um, <clears throat> very very interesting. But uh, as far as I know, finite state machines are usually not represented like this. Mm, people usually don't code um, finite state machines like that um, because. If you have more uh, states and more different even dimensions to the state machine, right? So you have a current state and you have maybe event and maybe on top of event, you may have an environment, a particular environment and so on and so forth. You can actually have more variables in here. It kind of becomes difficult to like, you know, maintain this code or just, you know, code this in general and people usually don't code uh, finite state machines by hand like we did in here uh, i think people generate them so and one way to uh, to actually code such a finite state machine is to code it as an array actually a two-dimensional array so uh, it's going to have uh, a dimension for a state and for event and the value of the um, of the array of the element of the array is going to be the transition to the next state right so that's how usually people do that so um we want to be able to actually use enumeration as an index of an array uh, and i don't know if in rust is it's actually easy i think in rust is actually quite hard unless you uh use hash maps instead of instead of arrays but it feels like an overkill um, so I'm probably not going to do that, right? I'm probably not going to do that. So, but the idea is going to be the following. So if you have like um, some constants for locked, uh, right, and unlocked, uh, then for the event, uh, you're going to have push, which is again, is going to be zero and coin, which is going to be one. You can create a two dimensional array. So let's call it like this is going to be, um, I kind of want to make it 
global. Okay, so we're not gonna modify this global array, so that means it should be fine, uh, right? I'm gonna call it FSM, and this is basically what it's going to have. So the first dimension of the array is going to be the, um, the state, right? So, and as you can see, we have two states in here, right? So maybe I'm gonna even introduce something like states count, right? And as you can see, uh, in terms of like amount of states, we have two of them. Uh, and uh, we also wanna have the events count. So how many events we have in here? We also get, have two of them, right? So the first dimension is a states count uh, and the inner dimension, the inner dimension is going to be the events count. Right, events count. And what's gonna be the type? The type is going to be use size, basically a transition to, to a different state. Um, all right, so how would you uh, represent that? Let's see what we can do about that. Uh, <clears throat> so let me actually draw that. Mm, so as already mentioned, uh, first dimension is going to be uh, uh, state, All right? So here is the state, and this one is going to be event, right? Uh, and state is going to be uh, locked, unlocked. Um, maybe I'm going to even put like locked, unlocked, and then event is going to be push and uh, coin. Right. So, and essentially in these elements of this table, right, in these elements of this table, uh, we're going to keep the indices of which state we have to switch to. Um, so if you are um, in unlocked state, right, this one is unlocked state, right, zero is unlocked, unlocked. Or is it locked? I cannot remember <laughs> because they are numbers, right? They are numbers. It's kind of difficult. Okay, so zero is locked actually, uh, right? So this is locked, uh, and this one is unlocked, unlocked. Uh, uh, and uh, mm, zero is push, right? Zero is push, and this one is a coin push and a coin if you are locked and you try to push you should stay in locked so that means the next state uh, on the intersection of these two things is going to be zero right if you're locked and uh, the event is coin you switch to unlocked so that means you will transition to this state right uh, so there is uh, an extra thing in here that i don't think we need so let me actually quickly remove this entire stuff uh, so let's also grab this color and I'm just going to connect everything together in here and eh. all right. So if you unlocked and you push, you need to switch back to locked. Uh, if you unlocked and you put a coin, you're going to switch back to here, right? So, and this is basically the table that describes a uh, given the state and event, what's going to be the next state. Right. And essentially, it's quite easy. So you take the current state, you take the current event, and you look up the, uh, uh, the array, and you just assign the next state to, to that state, and you basically keep jumping around this table. And this is actually a very simple table, right? It's only two by two, but the state machines could be actually quite bigger, right? And again, they may have even have more dimensions. And furthermore, the cells in here may have more things in them, right? So they may have not only the state to switch to, but also maybe an action to update an environment. Yes, and as a matter of fact, um, well, maybe in that case, it's not a finite state machine, right? So because, yeah, 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 so CS people, they have very strict classifications and like very strict criteria of what can be called a finite machine. And if it doesn't meet that criteria, it's not like a finite state machine. Um, so as far as I know, um, right, Turing machine, for instance, Turing machine, um, can modify its environment, right? If you take a look at the Turing machine, um, Turing machine. so I'm trying to be really careful with what I say because I, I'm really an educated person, so I, I just don't want to accidentally piece off people with a PhD in CS, right? So, um, yeah, uh, Turing machine, right? Turing machine is basically 
such table, right? It's such table. But on top of actually having the state to which it have to switch to, it also has an action that modifies the environment. And one of the actions is where to move the Turing machine head, right, left or right, or uh, and what to write into the current uh, cell. Right. So Turing machine is sort of like a finite state machine that on top of switching its state can also modify the environment, which in turn may affect how it switches its state. Right. It's sort of like having uh, a positive feedback loop with the environment. So the Turing machine changes the environment, environment changes the Turing machine state, and they're sort of having a conversation with each other. Right. So as far as I know, in finite state machines can't really change their environments in that, in that sense. Right. Um, uh, so they can only sort of observe the environment rather than interact with it. So I'm, I'm not sure what the terminology have to be here, whether machine can update environment or cannot update environment. I'm not a computer scientist. I'm just a stupid uh, Java programmer. I don't know anything about this kind of stuff. So um, yeah, let's actually try to rewrite our simple finite state machine um, using a race like that, right? Uh, using a race like that, it would be kind of cool to actually be able to have like a designated initializers in Rust. Like I would be able to say that if um, the current state, uh, the current state is locked, uh, right, then uh, initialize this like this or something, right? I wonder if there's something like that in Rust without third-party dependencies. Rust uh, designated. Uh, array, the well, let's actually Google array initialization. Initialization, array initialization, methods of array initialization. So you need to have a separate crate, uh, but it's probably something that comes with the distribution of. And uh, do I really have to write this such a long thingy just to initialize an array? Um, okay. Mm. It's really not convenient because I, I want to do like in PRC, right? Where I can specify, okay, that index uh, refers to that, that index refers to that. That would be actually super convenient. But it looks like I cannot do that. So Rust is, as, is not as convenient as C, unfortunately. It is what it is and it isn't what it isn't. At least it's safe, right? At least it's safe. It is not as convenient uh, as C, but at least it's safe. And definitely not having uh, designated initialization as a part of the uh, core of the language makes it more safe, of course. Yes. Uh, so, um, yeah. So, what we're going to have in here. Um, so, if it's locked, uh, right. So, locked zero. I need to sort of like remember that. Uh, we're going to have this kind of stuff. Um, uh, and the first one is push. It's going to stay locked, right? And the second one is unlocked. Uh, it's going to stay locked. Okay. Uh, all right. And for the, for the second thing in here, I suppose we're going to just keep it unlocked. Right. So now we have this simple FSM. Uh, yeah, so basically I actually used locked as the first element. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, all right, let's see if this entire thing even compiles. I'm not sure if it compiles. Uh, so, oh yeah, it, it compiles. That's that's actually nice. Uh, consent is never used to locked and locked. Okay. So, and I suppose the way uh, you transition between the states now, the way you transition between the states is that um, you accept this U sizes, right? You accept this U sizes, and then you return a new U size. And basically, you just return FSM state event. You see, we managed to compress, compress this huge uh, match. Well, we could compress it by removing the outer match, but anyway, uh, we could uh, we managed to compress it to just single expression that looks like this. And what's interesting is that this is gonna stay the same regardless of the amount of states and amount of events that you have, right? All of these dimensions got compressed into a single table lookup, right? And of course, you need to remove a semicolon in here. Um, so yeah, and this is how. Uh, finite state machines are represented usually they're represented as a table all right and to switch between uh, the states based on some sort of an event you just look up state event what's the next state here's the next state uh, okay so because of that we probably don't need 
uh, this kind of thing, right? So we're going to be using uh, only this kind of stuff. Um, so an estate is initially going to be uh, uh, locked, right? So this is going to be a locked state. Uh, oh boy, and it makes it kind of difficult to print, uh, print them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So next state uh, takes the current state, uh, and then here we put a coin. And here we put the push, right? And I need some sort of function that will actually let me uh, convert from state to a string so I can actually print it. Uh, let me see if I can do that. A state to str, and it's gonna accept the state, uh, use size, and it's gonna return str. And I suppose I can say that it's gonna live for the entirety of the program because I'm gonna be just returning these string literals. So can I match now state and say if it's uh, locked, all right, this is going to be just locked. Uh, and if it's unlocked, it's going to be just unlocked. There we go. So if it's something else, I suppose it has to be unreachable, right? So we're going to just keep it as unreachable. Um, so and now uh, I can do the following thing. Uh, state to str, there we go. Uh, and then uh, we're gonna have something like state to str. There we go. Cool. Can I now uh, compile this entire thing? And it compiled without any warnings. Would you look at that? And now, if I try to run it, it's locked. I'm trying to push it. Uh, it's kind of funny why it is. It printed it as locked without quotes, but here it printed it with quotes. Ah, I know why. Because on the second one, I actually put a debug instead of like a regular print. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, that makes sense. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, and I'm trying to push it. I'm trying to push it. Nothing happens. I put a coin in there and it didn't unlock because um, I have no idea why. Let's see. Uh, so I put a coin. There we go. Probably because coin is one. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> so the first dimension is uh, locked or unlocked. So this one uh, basically is locked and this one is unlocked, right? And the second dimension here is push or uh, coin, right? So this is a push or coin. If you're locked, and you push, you're locked. If you're locked, you put a coin, you have to be unlocked. Okay, so, yeah. I should have actually copied as it was in, in here, all right? Uh, yeah, it's a little bit more difficult to work with, right? With this kind of representation. But as, as far as I know, this kind of representation is not meant to be read or created by humans. Uh, usually people write code that generates this kind of thing. Right, um, from something else, from, from a human readable representation, basically. Uh, you have some sort of a language and you compile that language down to finite state machine, almost like regular expressions. Actually, precisely as regular expressions. Uh, all right, so let's see what, what, what we have in here. So we're unlocked, we're trying to push this entire thing. And if I put a coin in there, it got unlocked. Uh, I can put another coin, it, it stays locked. And now I'm trying to push it, it got locked again. Okay, so we have uh, something that is closer uh, to like finite state machines that are used in production, right? So usually finite state machines are coded as tables and they usually have more uh, states and more different kinds of events, uh, right? And I wonder how can I have this representation but also have more, um, you know, stronger, like more type safe uh, types in here because I want to have a separate type for the state. Right, um, I can probably introduce something like this um, because like I want to uh, be able to have an enumeration state, right? And then uh, have state locked and unlocked. And at the same time, I want to be able to use that state as an index in the array. And also I want to be able to know the size, of the amount of enumerations in that, um, amount of the elements in this enumeration so I can create that array and so on and so forth. I'm not even sure. I can probably do something like that again if I use hash tables, um, right? So I can create something like this. So it's going to be hash map uh, to event hash map and it returns back to state. And then I can call this FS 
Sam, but it's kind of an overkill and it just doesn't feel right. Uh, because here you don't even have any overkill. You literally just have four numbers sequentially stored in the memory. And here you don't even know what is going on in there. Like it just depends on the implementation of the hash map. There's not, there's anything that can happen in there. And here you, you basically have a perfect hashing. So I don't really know how to do that in Rust to be fair, uh, but at least Rust is safe. Like um, at least Rust is safe. So that's the price of safety, right? So you just have to get used to that, right? It's a little bit inconvenient sometimes, right? But you just have to get used to that, right? Maybe there is a convenient way to do that. I just don't know it, to be fair. Um, so maybe we can Google that up. Is there like, do people even discuss that? Rust in num as array index. Is that a thing you can do? Is there a way to index an array by nums? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Provided a good solution in um okay so you need to have a separate package for that okay uh, cool 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 and I wonder how is it implemented even uh, so let's take a look at the source code where is the source code of this thing here is the source and I just want to see what it what it depends on so. Uh, it depends on serialization and stuff like that and JSON. Uh, really? Or is it? It's a def dependency. Okay, so that means you don't have to use it. Um, okay. It's kind of strange. Uh, anyway, so I think I'm not going to go into this rabbit hole. It looks like a pretty huge rabbit hole. And as I already said, we can't use any third party dependencies because we're implementing everything from scratch and we have a single file without any package manager. So uh, this is not the point of the. Um, of this uh, coding session, the point of this coding session is to learn how to implement regular expressions, right? Rust is a good language, I really like it. Cheers. Mm. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, um, the question is, how can you use finite state machines to match a string? Right. So, okay, it's kind of cool. You can like code the behavior of simple uh, real life object, right? Simple real life objects. Um, but how can you use them to match strings? We will find that out after a small break, after I make a cup of tea. So <laughs> let's, make a, let's make a quick break and make a cup of tea. All right. So uh, let's clean up things a little bit. So I think I want to add uh, the links to the Wikipedia articles to the description, right, for anyone who's interested. So uh, the link, uh, the article about finite state machines is going to be available uh, right here. So uh, finite state uh, machine. And also we were talking about Turing machine. Uh, I compared them with finite state machine. I'm not sure if they're even comparable. Uh, maybe I violated like uh, 69 laws of computer science by saying that Turing machine is like finite state machine. I don't know. I'm really sorry. I really apologize if I did. So Turing machine. Uh, there we go. <clears throat> so uh, again, Let's try to see how you, you can use finite state machines for matching strings, right? So let's actually uh, rename this entire thing. I'm gonna call it, um, how is this thing called? I forgot, forgot. Uh, something, something tile. Um, turnstile, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's called turnstile. So I'm gonna rename this file into the turnstile, uh, right? And I'm gonna keep it in here, right? So maybe uh, let's, create a, let's create a repo. So it's gonna be git init. Uh, there we go. Um, mm, 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 mm. And uh, I'm going to say implement uh, an FSM uh, for turn uh, style, uh, turn style from the F, uh, from the Wikipedia article, uh, right from the Wikipedia articles. We did that for the uh, educational purposes, just to understand what is a finite state machine. Right. So let's write. Um, let's try to match um, a simple string like A, B, and C, right? So can we implement uh, a finite state machine that given a string A, B, C would, will tell that it is in fact A, B, C, and if it's not A, B, C, it will tell, yeah, it's not, it's not A, B, C, I'm sorry. So um, how can we do that? 
um, again, uh, so usually finite state machines operate on the current state and events, right, or something. So what's going to be an event in the case of a string? Right, in the case of a string, we can look at a string as a stream of characters. So each character could be considered uh, an event, right? Each character could be considered an event. So maybe for each of the characters A, B, and C, uh, we could have a separate state of the finite state machine, right? So let's try to draw that uh, virtual machine. So initially, um, it uh, such a finite state machine, virtual, did I say virtual machine, I meant finite state machine, starts at somewhere at the beginning, right? So, and if it encounters A, it switches to the state A, right? If it encounters, like if it got an A, uh, so it switches to the state A. If being in a state A, it receives B, it switches to the state B. If being in a state B, it receives C, it switches to the state C, right? And if being in a state C, it receives the end uh, of the of, of the string, it uh, goes to the success. I don't know how to represent success. I'm going to actually represent it like this. Right. Now, if being in any of the states, there's actually at least four states. So the first initial state, then a state A, state B, and state C. If on any of the states, it receives something that is not what it expects to receive, in any of the states, it goes into a fail state, right? Something like this. Um, there we go. So as you can see, we have two states, the successful state uh, and the fail state. <clears throat> so um, now we need to take this graph and turn it into a finite state machine table right, and code all of the transitions appropriately and basically iterate through the string and transitions the states until you reach either a uh, success or a failure. And depending on which state you uh, reach, you will just draw a conclusion whether it matches or not. So you basically keep iterating until you reach one of these terminal states, right? So one of these terminal states. So this is how I think you can use finite state machines to match a string. This is how I think. I, I never actually read anything about regular expressions, so I only heard how finite state machine works and that you can use finite state machines for matching strings. And this is the conclusion that I came up to. So if you combine them two, this is the only see, the way I see you can use them, right? So basically you have a state and uh, characters become some sort of events. And depending on what uh, characters you receive, you switch the, uh, the state and so on and so forth and, and until you reach something. Uh, that you wanna that you wanna reach. So let's actually try to code that. How about that? Let's actually try to code that and see if it's going to work. If it's going to work. Okay, A B C R S. Fn main. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at this entire thing. Uh, hello A B C. Uh huh. Uh huh. And. So let's actually recompile. Okay, so we don't have this thing anymore. I renamed it to turn style. And if I run this entire stuff now, it says hello ABC. Okay, this one is interesting. So how many states do we have? Uh, we have actually uh, five, six states in here, right? We have six states. Mm, and how many events do we have? I suppose we can just uh, work only with ASCII, uh, ASCII characters, and uh, basically the amount of events that you can have is from 0 to uh, 220, uh, 127, right? Uh, I don't quite remember. I think we, we, we may try to exclude uh, non-printable characters for now. Uh, so let's actually go to ASCII table. So yeah, let's just simplify ourselves the work. Yeah, it could be from 0 to 127, um, it would be easier to do from 0 to 127 because I can just use the code, the ASCII code as an index in the FSM table, if you know what I mean, right? It would be just like a little bit easier. So, um, yeah. 
Mm, let me see, let me see. So do I have two, I think, oh yeah, I think I would have two Emacs open for some reason. Uh, all right, so here's the ABC. Um, and here I want to actually do something slightly different. Um, I want to do the following thing. I want to represent the table like so. Um, so the states are going to be um, columns, right? So you, you're going to have state one, uh, state two, state three, state four, and so on and so forth. Uh, and each individual column is going to be essentially a character, right? So here you're going to be, you're going to have something like this, right? Right. And the characters are going to be something like A, B, C, D, and so on and so forth. All right. Um, yeah, actually, let's put it like this. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, and it's still going to be two-dimensional array, right? So it's still going to be two-dimensional array. Uh, and essentially, if you are in a state one and you receive A, you're going to be switching to the second state. Right, and if you receive something else, you're going to be switching to some sort of like a terminal state in here, uh, which is going to be like available like this. Right, so um, uh, just a second, I need to make a small break. All right, uh, I'm back. So essentially, uh, the, uh, the events are going to be the rows but the states are going to be the columns, right? Um, but maybe I think I'm going to store them row-wise, but uh, it's a little bit easier to think about it this way, I think, right? Because now you, for each individual state, you have sort of like these layers, right? So, and you can clearly see that, okay, if you want to match A, uh, if you want to match A, uh, you have to take the A and on state one, you switch to the state two. And on any of the other events, on any of the other events, you have to switch to the terminal state that is somewhere uh, somewhere there. Or maybe the terminal state is going to be the zeroth one, so that way you can basically zero initialize each individual event in here and it will automatically terminate with the failure or something like that. So, um, yeah, that's how we're going to approach all of that. And because of that, I want to take uh, this sort of row, uh, this sort of column, and turn it into a separate type. Right, and essentially the finite state machine is going to be a vector. It is going to be a vector of these kind of sort of states of these kind of sort of types, right? So let's see what we can do uh, about that. So maybe it's going to be something like struct uh, state, right? So it's going to be struct state, uh, and here we're going to have um, uh, some sort of transitions. Um, how can I call them? Um, I don't want to use transition because it's a very long word, right? I want something uh, something shorter. Um, um, maybe one of the things I could do, I could actually just use an alias, and that alias is going to be essentially 127 elements. 127, uh, and uh, the actual values are going to be use size, right? And because of that now, uh, my FSM is essentially a vector of, of these states. There we go. Uh, and that way, uh, I should, I can probably even um, create a new FSM in here. I wonder if I can do FSM like new, and it will redirect to the vector state. Is that a, is that something I can do in here? And of course, I want to actually make it mutable. Uh, all right, so let me try to recompile this entire thing and. Uh, so first, oh yeah, you you put the the type first and then the size. Okay, sure. Uh, I don't mind that. I don't mind that. And that actually works, right? So you can just create an FSM like this. All right. So now, um, how can we code this kind of state? So essentially, to code the first state, I need to create this column, zero initialize everything, zero initialize everything, but set the ith, the eighth one to one to the next state uh, that's what i need to do in here so and how can i even do all of that uh, i wonder so maybe maybe it would be better to actually still have a struct in here right some sort of like a struct uh, but i still don't know how to call the element 
like this specific element uh, uh, TS so we're gonna call it TS transitions whatever uh, right so and then we're gonna have implementation state that constru constructs a new state in here right and uh, essentially um, we're gonna just do something like this is gonna be self uh, right and self is essentially uh, TS but all of that is uh, zero initialized right everything is completely zero initialized hopefully it's going to work so uh, FSM push uh, state new there we go uh, and it compiles all right so the this thing is never used but that's totally fine that is totally fine so what I want to do in here I want to be able to just say okay set um, what's interesting is that uh, I want to sometimes be able to actually match a particular range of characters, right? So maybe because of that, I need some sort of a special function uh, that given the range of the characters, right, will set all of them to a particular state, right? Uh, will set all of them to a particular state. Um, so, yeah. Mm, how are we gonna, we're gonna do that? How how this function is going to be called? Uh, so maybe we're, we're gonna accept a range in here, right? As far as I know, Rust has ranges, right? So let's actually Google them up. Uh, should be pretty straightforward, actually. So range. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So you can have slices as ranges. Oh, there's ops range. Mm. Mm, and I suppose I'm looking for a type range. Uh, yeah, so it has a start and end and so on and so forth. So maybe as a range, I'm going to be accepting like a range you size. So and you set a particular range to a particular state now to a particular transition of the state. Right. Even though this entire state column is called state, this is an index in FSM. Right. So this thing is in fact index in FSM. <clears throat> so yeah the naming is going to be actually kind of difficult um the naming is going to be very difficult uh maybe because of that i want to call this thing a column right so this is not particularly a state it's sort of like a transition column but again it's it's a very long name i don't want to call it like that right so this is going to be a column and uh, this thing is basically FSM index of some sort and maybe because of that I want to do something like FSM index uh, Maybe I'm gonna even call it like this FSM index and it's just basically use size So at least make it self-documented, right? At least make it self-documented FSM index right? And FSM is going to be basically a vector of these FSM columns, right? So maybe we're gonna also pre prefix it with FSM uh, right, everything is prefixed and so on and so forth. And since I'm um, prefixing everything, maybe it makes sense to actually put it in a separate module, but I, I think it's fine. So FSM colon, F, uh, FSM index. Uh, so an FSM column can be constructed like this. It is zero initialized. And then you can set a range of these values. It would be nice to have like an alias for this U size as well. Um, so well i mean this u size is basically fsm transition right fsm transition uh transition uh and it's a u size uh fsm transition um no 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 we already have a have a name for that it's fsm index yeah yeah, yeah. fsm index that's what it is is it not yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's what it is it's a fsm index but the index within the transition table also needs some sort of a name. So I'm not kind of, I'm not sure how I'm going to call that, but uh, I don't know. Um, so we have some index. Um, so let's call it fill range. Right, so something like this, fill a particular range. And on top of that, it will accept itself, but mutable, right? So it will accept itself, but mutable. Uh, it's not gonna return anything in particular. Right, okay, so how can I iterate a particular range? Um, so it's gonna be T in the range, right? So, and then self TS, uh, maybe I'm gonna actually do I, uh, TS I. Uh, and I'm going to be setting just state to this entire thing. There we go, right? So yeah, that way I can just, um, you know, take a particular range of characters and set that range to, um, you know, 
to a particular state. Um, mm, 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 so it would be also kind of cool to... Yeah, I think it's fine. Let's see what we can do in here. Uh, unfortunately, this kind of interface doesn't really allow us to sort of chain these separations together. So first, what you will have to do, you will have to make a mutable column. So this one is actually FSM column, right? It's a FSM column, uh, and this is going to be call, right? And after that, you will essentially fill the range, and the range is going to be what? Uh, I want to be able to actually fill the range. Oh man, I, I want to be able to use like characters in here. Uh, I wonder if that's the thing you can do, right? Use the characters. Um, so, because then I will need to convert the character into the code and stuff like that. And it's going to be just, um, it would be kind of cool if I could just map um, characters to array indices, like in Ada or something like that. But I mean, I cannot do that. It is what it is. Uh, and the state is going to be, I don't know, something like one, because we're filling up the zero state. So the state it, ha it has to switch to is going to be state one. Um, all right, so let me try to compile this entire stuff. Maybe for each individual state right here, we're going to have a separate, um, how to say that, separate uh, scope, right? So this is a state zero. Uh, maybe state uh, FSM column, right? It's FSM column zero. Uh, we're setting up uh, this specific column. Um, all right, uh, let me see if it's going to compile. Um, all right, so what do we have in here? A range character uh, we don't have a range and this is because it's located somewhere in core ops can I actually do std ops um, mm, 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 std slice a range uh, std ops uh -huh. yes there is such thing as std range Nice, 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 nice. So let's actually try to import this entire thing. It's going to be use std ops range. Right there we go. And let me recompile this entire thing. Okay, so slice indices uh, are type of use size, but ranges or ranges of use size. Oh, oh, that means you can actually take a range, right? And you can use a range like this and you can set it to a particular value. That would be kind of cool. On top of that, can I map the ranges? Is that a thing you can do with a range? Right, uh, because range um, should be mappable because it's a functor, right? So you know how in Haskell, um, so let's actually go to Google, uh, there is a functor, which is an interface of anything that you can map, right? And essentially anything that is parameterized by a single generic type is usually mappable so and range is basically the case so it must be mappable uh can you can you map it um, so mm -mm -mm. should be possible i swear to god I swear to god it should be possible uh so it has start and end it has method contains and is empty and that's about it which is kind of sad uh, and i can't believe that you can't just map the range this is so bizarre to me. Um, is that because it, you can invalidate some of the like properties of the range or something like that? So print a len and let's just print this entire thing like that and the range is gonna be from one to 10, right? And if I try to compile this entire thing, Rust C main RS, it's gonna be main, uh, right, right, right. So, and like, I can't believe that you can just do something like map X, uh, X plus one because it's totally, okay, so, and probably, well, I mean, it created an iterator, right? It's created a map iterator, but it didn't map the range per se. It basically turned it into a lazy thing, right? It basically turned it into a lazy thing, and I won't be able to do something like, like X code uh, on a, a range of characters or something like that, right? I won't be able to do that. So it's not a thing that you can easily do. I'm not even sure if character has a code, right? So uh rust character code rust character code uh can you take a code of it is it is it something that you can do uh yeah so ascii is ascii uh to digit but this is not what i want actually why does it have to digit from digit from 
Uh, so, all right. Mm. Okay, Rust character code. I already tried to Google that, but I mean, parsing sure to U, U8. Maybe I can just do it as uh, U8. Yes, yeah, I should be able to do as U8. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah there we go. Um, and I suppose after that, maybe I can try to iterate this entire thing, right, for X in this entire thing, just to see what the hell is going on in there. Right, and this is going to be something like this. Uh, yep, and it was a single thing, right, if I iterate through all of them, yeah, there we go. So, yeah, but it's, this is not what I wanted, actually. This is not what I wanted, because I won't be able to use that inside of a particular range, right? It's just, like, not something I can easily do. In any case, uh, map, um, well, I can just do it like this. So it's going to be I uh, as U8, right, as U8, and I'm pretty sure it's still not, uh, not going to compile. Right, because it has to be use size, but I won't be able to turn it into use size. Will I, will I be able to turn it into use size? Uh, all right, expected struct range, but uh, range inclusive. Ah, it, it's a separate, okay, it's, it has a separate type. All right, cool. <laughs> Anyways, uh, what I tr was trying to do in here is just to, to print to set. Uh, you know, the, the next state to the FSM column, right? I was just trying to wire up some of these things in here. Um, all right, cool, nice. Now, um, I want to be able to actually print FSMs somehow. Mm, I want to be able to print them. And I want to be able to print them, you know, column-wise, right? Column by column. Unfortunately, that will require iterating them slightly differently. So in the outer loop, you will have to iterate the events first. And then in the inner loop, you will have to iterate um, states. Uh, and that's not really convenient if you have a vector of columns and it's just like going to be really weird. Uh, so let me, yeah, let me maybe actually implement something like this. Can I do implementation for FSM? Is that a thing you can do in Rust? Or is it only for structs and for, for, for type outside of the crate where type is defined? Uh, cannot define inherent impl for a type outside of the... Oh, okay, I see, I see, I see. So it's basically an alias. So let's actually make it a struct then. Uh, so and here is going to be CS, which, which stands for columns. Right, and because of that, we'll probably have to implement something like push or whatnot, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, so this one is going to be self, uh, self, CS, vector, uh, FSM column. Uh, maybe it has to be something like this. Can I just do new? Will it automatically derive it? I think it did. Uh, I think I think it in fact did, and then if I try to push something in here, uh, I'm pushing the column, All right? So it's going to be FSM column, uh, yep, yep, and this one is going to be just immutable uh, self, right? Here's immutable self, then cell CS push uh, column. There we go. There we go. So let me see what's going to happen if I try to compile this entire thing. Everything seems to be working. Everything seems to be twerking. So now I want to have a method that basically prints the current state. To do that, I will have to iterate uh, this entire thing first, like basically from 0 to uh, 127. Um, I think it would be nice to have some sort of a constant FSM column uh, column size, and it's going to be equal to 120, uh, 27. It's going to be size. You saws you. <laughs> Uh, all right, so in here we can do something like FSM column uh, column size. There we go, FSM column size. So, uh, all right, so it's going to be I in zero, uh, FSM column size. So in here we have uh, a column, right? Um, to be fair, Well, this is actually a row, right? If we if we iterate a column uh, element of columns, we are iterating rows, in fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah it makes sense. Uh, so, and then I need to iterate um, iterate actual things in here, actual columns in here. Um, so, in um, mm, so I also have to accept an immutable self, right? I have to accept immutable self. Uh, and in immutable self, 
I might as well actually just iterate C in self CS and that gives me a column, right? It gives me a column and here I'm iterating each individual sort of symbol. All right, so, all right, cool. So, and that means I can do column uh, symbol, right? And I'm gonna be printing them like this uh, with a space in here. There we go, there we go. And at the end of this entire thing, I'm gonna be printing all of that with a new line, right? Uh, I might as well um, put nothing in here. I have no idea why Emacs, oh, because I forgot to do this thing. Okay, so also maybe it would make sense for me to print the actual character in here, or at least uh, this value, the, this, uh, the value of the symbol. Uh, right, the value of the symbol. Okay, so we push the first column, right, and then I can do FSM dump. Right, there we go, here's the FSM dump. And uh, I couldn't print this entire thing because it's a self column something something. Uh, because it's TS, okay. All right, do we have anything else? Uh, cannot move uh, out which is behind a shared reference. Why are you trying to move in here? I'm not quite sure because can you just iterate it as a reference? Uh, maybe if I do something like iter, uh, yeah, you should be able to do that. Uh, and for some reason, it didn't really work precisely as I wanted to work. It printed too many. Yeah, it printed uh, this thing. There we go. Now we're talking. My God. Okay. Uh, also, can I actually pad with uh, a bunch of zeros in here? I think that would be actually kind of cool. Something like zero three. Is that how we do that? I think this is how we do that. Now we're talking. Okay, so here are all of the possible events, right? So, and this is a single state. And as you can see, one single event in that state will result in moving towards the next state, but we don't have the next state yet, right? We don't have the next state yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it would be kind of like better to maybe have a separate function in here, but maybe just, you know, uh, call ts uh, a as you size set to one. Yeah, I guess it's going to be a little bit better, but we'll need fill range in the future for sure, because sometimes you want to actually map a range of them. Uh, and this thing doesn't really, yeah, so it says that it's not used. Okay, so now we need to set the next state. But here's an interesting thing. Uh, if you hit any of the characters that you're not supposed to hit, right, this current table says that you have to switch to the state zero. So that means the state zero has to be the terminal one. So that means that the state that matches A uh, should not be the zeros one. Right, so what we need to do in here, we just need to first push uh, the sing single terminal state, right? Uh, okay, so basically failed state. So I want the failed state to be zero because it makes it super easy to initialize columns, right? So basically you take the column and everything that is zero, it's automatically failed. So you need to only fill a specific characters and there you go. These characters is gonna uh, match and the rest of them are not gonna match. So yeah, you're gonna have something like this. Right, uh, and uh, yeah, so this one is going to be uh, state one, right? It's going to be state one. Uh, you create a column and that means you have to switch to the next one. It would be kind of cool to have something that keeps tracks of track of the current state. And you know, we already have a thing that keeps track of the current state. It's called the size of the, of the columns. Right. So, yeah, when you didn't push anything into the columns, right, when you didn't push anything into the columns, it's going to be equal to zero, which is the index of the next state. Right. So that's actually pretty cool. Uh, so what that means, uh, that means here you create that thing and the next state that you have to take is going to be len um, plus one. Right. So, yeah, that's it. That's actually pretty cool. And as you push it, it, you know, it will increment the length of it and... Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, let's take a look at what's going to happen. Uh, so as you can see, now we have two columns. The first column is absolutely zero, but the second one, uh, the second one on uh, the character 97 contains transition to the state two, 
right transition to the state two okay so let's actually create the next state so the state two is going to transition to the state three upon c and b right and then uh on uh, for the state three uh we're going to transition to the state four upon seeing um the uh, the character c right so we also want to make sure that um there is no characters after uh, after abc right so that means maybe we should introduce something that would indicate the end line right so one of the events that we have is the characters right and something should also indicate the end of the line um and the question is what uh, we're going to use to indicate the end of the line well we can use a value 128 actually 127 maybe even um so to be fair uh if i set it to 127 that means the maximum value that, that i can have in here is 126 because it's the amount of those things right so and 127 is a valid ascii character as far as i know right it is in fact a valid ascii character yeah it's it's something like delete so it means i have to make it like 130 uh right 130 so and a new line i suppose could be uh, um fsm new line uh could be 120 uh, 29 right so this is going to be the indication of the new line and this thing is going to be uh use size all right okay so state three uh and uh for the state four uh if you encounter a new line right uh, a new uh, fsm new line uh you switch to the state five and the state five fsm column five is going to be just yet another empty column uh, fsm column uh, because it will just indicate the success right it will just indicate the success to be fair, to be fair, maybe we should not even push it because we're never going to try to access that state. Uh, all right. So we basically need to organize the loop. We need to organize the loop that simply um, iterates until it sees the state five and then quits it if it hits state five or state uh, zero, right? So the two terminal states here are gonna be zero and five. Uh, right, so maybe because of that, I don't need this kind of stuff. Another interesting thing, you can see that initialization of each individual, st individual state in here is actually pretty similar. We can probably take all of these events, right? All of these events and put them into into a, a, an array of some sort right can i do that real quick so it's going to be something like events and the first event here is going to be something like uh maybe it's going to be actually a vector of some sort so it's going to be a as you size then b as you size then c as you uh as you size and then we're going to have fsm uh new line right so here's the fsm new line and now uh, I don't even have to think about it too much. I can do for event in events. I probably have to iterate it like this. And I can, I'm going to just copy this entire thing in here, right? So, and basically for the event, uh, for this event, you switch to the next state always and you push the next state and you can remove this entire stuff. There we go. So essentially we can have a list of these sort of events and we can compile it into FSM. Uh, let's see what's gonna happen, right? Let's see what's gonna happen. It doesn't really work because uh, a local variable with a similar name exists if, oh, event. I meant event, not even. Right, what else do we have in here? So here's a column, slice you size or arranges you size. Uh, I don't quite understand. Event is supposed to be your size because, ah, oh, because I need to dereference it, of course. There we go. So here is our compiled, yeah, you can clearly see A, B, C. Look at that. Uh, yeah, so here is the first state, second one, third one, A, B, C. And then we expect the, uh, the new line, right? So all of that are ASCII characters, and then we have a new line. Uh, we can actually add more events in there, I think we can try to add an event like beginning of the line uh right which could could be also taken into account by the um uh, by the um, fsm and stuff like that okay so we compiled uh a simple um finite state machine 
out of the sequence of events. All right. Uh, now uh, we probably need a function that takes uh, FSM, that specific FSM, and uh, a string and answers a simple question. Does the string match this regular expression or not? Okay, uh, match FSM. Uh, so we're going to accept FSM like this, and uh, also we're going to accept some sort of an input in here. So it's going to be str. Uh, and the answer is going to be just Boolean, yes or no. Uh, right, and how are we going to be doing all that? So I'm going to be iterating characters in the input. Right, and I probably need to start uh, from a particular state, right? So we're going to have a convention that the beginning state is going to be one because zero is a failed state, uh, right? But the beginning one is uh, beginning one is going to be one, right? So it's going to be state uh, one. There we go, and um, we need to have a couple of conditions in here. If state equals zero, or state is uh, greater. Uh, or equal than FSM uh, len, right? Basically, if you hit the zero or over the um, allowed amount of state of FSM, you basically reach the terminal state, right? And in here, we're gonna basically break. Uh, so otherwise, you switch to the next state like this, right? In FSM um, column, you need to switch the col uh, pick the column. So column is the state, right? And the specific event, the specific event is uh basically the character as you size uh there we go as you can see we have a specific state and then an event and we have a two-dimensional table and we look up the next state um right in an intersection of these two things uh and there we go so that's how we match an fsm and if we <clears throat> if we reach this state right if we reach the state, uh, I suppose one of the things we can do in here is basically give the finite state machine, give the finite state machine. Um, mm, this one is actually rather interesting. Hmm, we can give it the end of the line. Uh, right, we can give it the end of the line. But it's kind of dangerous, I think. Hmm. I think it's kind of dangerous if I send new line because this loop may break because of these kind of things, right? So, and in that case, you have to be super careful. Um, <laughs> okay, so essentially we can check the following thing. After this entire loop, if state reached zero, this is an insta, insta false, right? So that means we reached a uh, fail state. Um, then, and if the state um, is greater or equal than FSM CS len, um, hmm. <laughs> okay. If it's still less, if it's still less, what we can do, we can give it the last event in here, right? We can give it the last event, uh, and after that the final result will depend on whether the state is actually greater than uh, this thing. There we go. So this is how we're going to do all of that. Mm, okay. So essentially we're just handling like corner cases in here, uh, here and there. And let me see what's going to happen. So here's the input. Uh, yeah, well, you need to iterate the characters. We're going to iterate characters. Uh, all right, cool. So we don't really... Uh, call this function here yet, uh, but I think we need to start calling it. So we, we dump in the FSM, I think it's quite important. Uh, let's uh, define inputs. Uh, what kind of inputs we're gonna define in here? So the first input is going to be something like, hello world. Then we're gonna have ABC, and then we're gonna have ABCD, right? So let's try to match these strings with this FSM and see what's going to happen. For input in inputs, uh, I suppose I will have to do something. Do I need to do iter? It feels like I will need to do iter. Uh, right, so I need to print something like this. So this one is going to be this and then this. Uh, input uh, match FSM. We'll provide the FSM. We'll probably need to provide FSM as immutable reference right because we don't plan to mutate it whatsoever and then we'll provide the input and let's see what's gonna happen let's see what's gonna happen all right so look at that oh my god mm. 
hello world didn't match, ABC matched, ABCD didn't match, right? So we implemented uh, a simple finite state machine that is capable of uh, determining whether a particular string matches ABC or doesn't match ABC. And what's interesting is that we compiled that finite state machine from a sequence of events, which kind of looks like a regular expression already. If you think about it, a regular expression for such a string would be ABC and and that's precisely what we have in here, right? So basically, if you treat each character, each ASCII character as an event and dollar as an event new line, you basically already have a compiler for a small subset of irregular expressions. The fuck? So, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's kind of interesting. So basically, you just need to add more and more features in here, but the basis is already there. So it's just a table and transitions between the tables. But it could be kind of, uh, kind of complicated when you start introducing features like this, right? So um, one, two, three. How how do you compile this to uh, to a finite state machine? Well, I suppose it's going to be like. Um, the graph of states is going to be more complicated, so the compilation will become recursive instead of iterative now. Uh, so, but yeah, let's actually try to implement a simple regular expression, expression compiler. Uh, right, so let's, let's do it like this. So fn uh, compile fsm, right, so we're going to take, um, maybe, you know what, since yeah it feels like this thing should be called rejects right <laughs> because i'm trying to compile fsm but in fact i'm compiling rejects uh so rejects uh, maybe i'm gonna call it source right so see and it will fsm right and this is what we need to do if i rename type fsm to rejects that will look exactly like a rejects library actually uh, so let's actually call it like this. It's going to be a rejects. This is going to be rejects. Um, you create a new, you create a push or something. Uh, we might as well actually put a compile as a method uh, in here. It will return itself, I suppose, and it accepts the source uh, like this. Uh, and it's going to be to do. There we go. Um, all right. And that way. Uh, we should be able to actually create something like this. So you have FSM, then you have rejects, uh, rejects, uh, compile, ABC, dollar. Um, all right, so, and we're gonna move uh, this entire loop, uh, this entire loop to, uh, to compile function. Then compile, uh, right, it's gonna be somewhere here. So I'm gonna put it in here just so we don't lose it, uh, right because we're going to be using it a little bit later. <sighs> okay, Emacs uh, just needs a little bit of time. Uh, so we can also dump the rejects just to see what's going on in there. And then, um, you know what? We can also move match FSM to the method of rejects, right? So you can create one, right? You can create one and then you can match one. So it's going to be match. This is going to be self. Uh, like this and here we can create replace FSM with self boom there we go uh, and match is already taken <laughs> uh, let's call it match uh, str right let's call it match str uh, so yeah and here you have this kind of stuff you iterate through the inputs and then instead of rejects you're gonna have something like FSM match str input and there we go so that's what we're gonna have in here all right so we're this starts to resemble a regular expression library which is kind of cool um so <laughs> I, maybe regular expressions in a nutshell are just just this right it's just basically finite state machine that can match characters and a compiler from regular expression language to that finite state machine uh, but again, I never read anything about, uh, you know, how to implement uh, regular expressions. Maybe it's a completely unoptimal way of doing that. Uh, who knows? But I'm just exploring things. Uh, I'm learning things. And it's like, this is actually quite cool. Um, I really like that. 
Um, anyways, um, so let's, let me try to compile this entire thing and see what's gonna happen. Uh, so, okay, <laughs> FSM, uh, FSM line, there we go. Uh, FSM match, uh, it's a rejects match string. Uh, do we have anything else? Okay, so here, uh, what I wanna do instead, I wanna implement this entire thing, right? So in instead of iterating events, right? Instead of iterating events, let's try to iterate these characters, right? So it's gonna be C, uh, SRC, uh, and there we go. I wonder if I don't have to do that, yeah. Okay, so if, um, Mm -mm. Let's actually match this kind of stuff. So it's going to be match C, uh, and if this thing is equal to the dollar, right? If it's equal to the dollar, uh, we're going to be adding the following event, all right? So for each character right now, we create a new column every, every time, uh, right? And the event in here is essentially FSM uh, new line. There we go. It's going to be FSM new line. If it's something else, right? If it's something else, uh, what I'm doing is that I'm using C as the event, as you size. And there we go. So we have a simple compiler in here, uh, right? And it can only compile, um, you know, specific characters and uh, the dollar. Let's see what's going to happen now. Is it going to work? Is it going to work now, yo? Uh, so first I have to actually have to actually uh, create myself, right? Uh, since I'm going to be only creating this thing by compiling, maybe I don't need the new method anymore and to be fair push is more of a like an external thing maybe only the compiler is going to push into the rejects right so i think i'm going to actually remove this thing uh but we do need dump we do need dump for debug purposes right so we only have to, like three methods on here compile regular expressions match the string uh, against the regular expression and dump the state of the uh, of the finite state machine uh, okay, so let's see what's going to happen in here. So here's, uh, so this one's going to be a result. It's basically self uh, with CS set to vector new, right? Something like this. Uh, so, and in here, uh, when I create a column, I update all of that stuff. Um, I update the column and then I do result might as well, I already called FSM everywhere. Let's actually call it FSM here too. FSM uh, CS push column. There we go. Uh, and after that, I just need to return the FSM. Is it going to work? Is it going to work now? Yo, no, it doesn't fucking work uh, because it's CS columns, right? So uh, anything else? Uh, you cannot just iterate this thing. You have to do something like chars. Okay, lucky chars. Um, so this thing has to be mutable. Uh, all right, I think it worked. Look at that, it didn't even change. You know what we can do now? We can quite easily extend this thing and add A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? So now we're gonna have more states. Yeah, there we go. As you can see, uh, it actually compiled down to a more complex finite state machine, and now it doesn't match any of the strings anymore, right? It doesn't match any of the strings anymore. So I might as well actually put something like this in here to separate the dump from the testing code, right? Uh, so it can only match uh, this string. So let's actually add it to the test suite. Uh -huh. So we'll look F, and as you can see, it actually matched the expected string. It actually matched the expected string. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty good and fucking cool, mate. Cheers, by the way. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. <clears throat> mm, so now we have everything to just start piling uh, things on top. Right, so now since we have the finite state machine, right, we just need to improve uh, the compiler. We just need to add more things to compile. For instance, um, can we now support dots, right? So if you encounter a dot, if you encounter a dot, uh, dot matches any character, right? So that means you will need to set the whole range of characters to match, right? The whole range of characters. Um, and this is precisely why I wanted to have fill range, by the way, right? Uh, because now if I encounter, 
if I encounter a dot, uh, what I'm doing is that it's just I fill a range, uh, and the range is basically from. I actually need to be able to set the range. Yeah, since the event is not only a character anymore, I think it has to be a size. Yeah. I think it has to be a size. Let's actually keep it your size. Uh, can I do something like self uh, ts uh, range and set it to state? To be fair, since this thing is such a simple function, maybe it doesn't make any sense to even have it in here, uh, right? You can just yeah, you can just access this thing directly because we're accessing the internals of the columns directly anyway. So what's the point, right? So essentially, at some point, we can take the rejects type and wrap it into module and make all of these types columns, uh, FSM indices, column sizes, like completely internal things because the user uh, doesn't need to know about anything. The user only cares about uh, rejects structure. Uh, you can compile string into the rejects, you can match the string against the rejects, um, and we as a developer do care about dump because we want to see what's internally there, right? So for us, this thing is not fully a black box, so like we know um, what's what's in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I actually watched some talk by Casey Moratori recently, where he said that black and white box are not really good names for, for the concepts because it makes it feel like the color is the central idea of the box, which is not. It's rather whether you can see through the box or not. So something that would be better, uh, a better terminology for this kind of thing would be opaque and transparent box right so because black and white is just like colors right it's not about the color of the box it's rather whether you can see the details inside of the box or not so and i do actually agree with that so yeah i think it would i think it would be better it's more precise opaque and transparent um all right so what i was doing um okay so if we try to uh, can I just set the range now? And the range that I want to set, I want to set the range of displayable characters, right? So let's just try to set the range of displayable. Uh, it's going to be 32 up until 127, right? And in here, I'm going to be setting the next state, essentially, right? So this is going to be the next state. Uh, okay, good. Expected users found... Mm -mm -mm. Oh, when you try to set a range like that, right, when you try to set a range like that, it actually expects also a slice of some sort. That's actually sad. But maybe, well, I mean, one thing I can do is actually just, just iterate. <laughs> Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, okay, sure. Let's just say that. Okay, so let's actually test something. Imagine that you have uh, something like uh, BC, uh, right? So we have ABC, then BBC, and then CBC, uh, and also C CBD, <laughs> and maybe also CBT. Okay, so and let's see if it's gonna match anything. Uh, okay, so as you can see, uh, maybe I need to actually print our regular expression. Let's actually try to do that. Uh, so it's gonna be src and it's gonna be dot bc, uh, and I'm gonna just put it in here. So this is src and uh, okay, print ln uh, rejects uh -huh, uh -huh, rejects src 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 all right so here is the rejects as you can see it does not match hello world but it does match abc bbc and cbc right because uh, the first one is dot uh, but it doesn't match cbd cbt or anything like that right it's completely false um pretty cool pretty cool huh and as you can see here um so the first state the state that is associated with the dot it jumps to the next state on any displayable character right any displayable character it just jumps there and we didn't put like a, a new line there which is kind of interesting does this mean that i will be able to match something like a b c d a b c d i think i won't be able to do that 
Oh, yeah, I actually managed to match it, right, because I didn't explicitly say that I want new lines, so it managed to actually match it. If I say that expect a new line, uh, end of the line. Why did I call it new line? Oh my god! I've been calling it new line the whole time, like an idiot. I am. Well, I mean, technically it maybe could be denoted by new line. Okay, so let's actually rename it to uh, end line end. <laughs> Maybe end line uh, because I, I don't want to. I don't want something that ends with double e. But maybe double e is fine. Uh, maybe double e is fine. Line end. Uh, all right. And now, as you can see, we we got an additional state in here, right? That jumps to to the end automatically. And as you can see, this thing is not matched anymore. And here is the regular expression. Okay. So that's pretty pug. Pretty pretty. Pogue, pretty, 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 pogue, a pogue, okay. Um, <clears throat> All of that is relatively straightforward, right? So we can probably try to pile more features on top, uh, like for example, ranges and whatnot, but these ones are actually quite easy to implement. So you, you basically treat this as a single state, right? This is a single state and it defines a range of the characters and basically this is like this, but custom. So we are basically allowing the user to customize the ranges. Right here is the range that you cannot customize. Uh, this is the range that you can customize. The most interesting feature that I would like to tackle right now is this. How the fuck do you do that? That's an interesting question. Right, so uh, let's make a small break. And after the break, uh, after I make a cup of tea, we're going to try to think about it. I already have a couple of ideas. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to work. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so here's the idea. Essentially, uh, nobody forbids us to loop the states into themselves. You know? So essentially what we can do, if you encounter uh, a character and then a star after it, you can basically uh, set B not to the next state, right, not to the next state, but into itself, right? So if you encounter B, it basically doesn't fail, but it just redirects to itself and it keeps redirecting to itself. And if you encounter something else, you can re only then redirect to the next one. So that's actually pretty cool. So this thing sort of creates a loop that repeats this thing over and over again until it doesn't repeat, uh, repeat anymore. That's actually pretty cool. So, uh, but that will require um, probably um, changing this entire thing. So this one is going to be very interesting because here uh, we have to look at the character, right? And then we'll have to look ahead, right? And see, is there a star somewhere there? Right, and if there is a star somewhere there, we'll have to actually generate um, a, a completely different thing. To be fair, not necessarily. If we encounter star, what you can do instead, you can go to the previous state and just loop that state into itself. Yes, I think that's actually a little bit easier. All right, so if I, I'm going to do something like this, right? Um, <clears throat> uh, so this is that... So that means I need to take the previous column, right? So it's going to be call uh, TS and uh, can I take something like lust? I think that's what I need to do in here. I need to take lust um, and I prob I'll probably also want to unwrap it. Right, I'm going to unwrap the uh, last thing. And after that, do I want to just iterate that stuff? I probably want to iterate, but I also want to iterate mutable. Uh, all right, so I want to iterate it mutable and what I'm gonna do in here. So what I'm taking it here uh, So this is gonna be like a, mm, Like a T uh, So I think I'm doing something incorrect in here, right? It's definitely something incorrect uh, Because what I have to do I have to do FSM CS 
Yeah, right. So here is the uh, the uh, FSM that I'm trying to compile. I take its, its uh, columns. I take the last column, if it exists, I unwrap it, and then I'm trying to iterate that column uh, mutable. Right. So, and that means here, uh, what I'm essentially doing, uh, the column itself is not it iterable, right? The column is itself is not iterable. That means I have to actually do something like TS and then iter mute. Right, so and maybe also because of that, I have to uh, take the last mutable, otherwise, I won't be able to iterate it. Finally, <laughs> welcome to Rust. Right, it's all for the sake of safety, right? So, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> So the, the strategy of Rust is to annoy the shit out of people, so they quit software development, so we have less software and we have less vulnerabilities. <laughs> I'm joking, joking. Security is important. Uh, okay, so here's the team, and essentially what I need to do now, right, what I need to do, I think I need to take all of the zeros, all of the failures of the previous uh, of the previous thing and turn them into successes, basically increment them to plus one. Um, and all of the successes needs to be redirected to themselves. That's right. Uh, I also need to know the size of FSM, otherwise I won't be able to actually determine which is a success and what is not. So I'm gonna take the len and we're gonna assign it to n somewhere here. Okay, so here what we're gonna have, uh, if t, is equal to we're actually doing n plus one uh and then we're pushing that thing in there so that means if it's equal to n right if it's equal to n i need to redirect that thing to n minus one right so i'm basically redirecting it to itself right um i'm redirecting it to itself uh otherwise otherwise if uh t is equal to zero uh, I'm redirecting it to the next one, so it becomes n. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, and what's interesting is that for now, if you encounter something else, that means uh, we're doing something wrong, right? For now, these assumptions, this um, invariant is incorrect. Uh, maybe in the future it will become correct as we add more features, but with the current amount of features, this should be unreachable, right? And that's why I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna explicitly mark it as so. Uh, after that, I don't have to push anything. So essentially, what this thing does, it simply modifies the previous state. It doesn't introduce any new state, but it modifies the previous one. That's basically what it does. Okay, uh, let me see what we can have in here. Uh, what I want to try to do, I want to actually try to reduce the, um, the amount of states. Uh, let's basically have this regular expression that is supposed to uh, basically match anything, right? It matches anything and let's see what it will compile to. Uh, all right, so and <laughs> it didn't match like any of these things at all. I absolutely love it. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, the failures became two. So this is zero, one, two. So failure will redirect here to the last one. And in the last one, we actually have nothing, I think. I'm not quite sure. Ah, I see. I said that star should not introduce the new state, but it does because any of these branches implicitly introduce a new state because it's outside of the match so since we introduce star now we need to like move these things into all like into all of the branches except the star right so it's going to be put in here and this one is also going to be put in here but not in star right and that way maybe we're going to have a correct um in finite state machine all right so what's going to be the next thing and as you can see it matched all of them right and everything that it needs to match right redirects into itself so now the state loops into itself until it finds something that doesn't match anymore uh, and in that case it uh, redirects to the next one so basically not being able to match anything means um uh you know means success right it basically means success uh, all right, that's actually pretty pogue. 
that's pretty cool. Uh, I wonder what we can do in here. So can we do something like A? So we can have arbitrary amount of A's, but then you have to have B, C, right? So uh, is it gonna work? Uh, A, B, C didn't work, which is quite ironic, I would say. Uh, B, B, C and C, B, C worked, but A, B, C didn't work. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. Oh shit, I think I know what the fuck is going on. This is actually quite interesting. Here's the problem. The problem is not in the compile, um, in the compile function. Compile function is correct, more or less, at least for now. Um, match string is not actually correct. So you see, every time we look at the character, no matter what happens, we switch to the next one. We switch to the next one. So, and this is basically what's going on. If you have uh, A, A, B, C, and you have A star B, C regular expression. So what you do, you have A, A matched, Right, so that means the state uh, remained here. The state remained on this thing. And after that, we switched to B. Okay, it didn't uh, match, but also uh, this state failed and it basically switched to here, right? And then after that, it automatically switched to C, but we shouldn't. So essentially, when star pattern fails, it should switch to the next state. But the character, the character has to stay the same. We should not increment the character if the start fails. Which means we need to extend our virtual machine. We need to extend our virtual machine. We need to uh, add an ability for the virtual machine to tell, move one character to the right or not. So now uh, the finite state machine, uh, why do I call it virtual machine? I don't know, maybe because I was working with BM for so long, I keep calling it virtual machine, I'm sorry. Um, so essentially now FSM that is compiled from regular expression operates on some sort of a reading head, right? And it tells this head move right. Uh, and I'm not sure, do, do we need to move left? So essentially this FSM kind of turns into a read-only Turing machine, right? This is very interesting. And what basically we're doing, we're taking regular expression and compile it down to the assembly of the, uh, the read-only Turing machine. This is so cool. <laughs> the, like implementing regular expressions is basically programming language development. Yeah, you're literally taking a language, uh, not Turing complete one, right? And compile it down to assembly of small virtual machine that you interpret. Holy fucking shit, this is so cool. <laughs> wow, um, I didn't expect this to be so fucking cool. <laughs> what the fuck? Hmm. I love it. Um, all right, this is actually very interesting. So essentially, in FSM colon, uh, on top of having FSM index, we need to probably have something that indicates whether you need to offset. Oh, shit. Yeah, so uh, something like FSM action, uh, right? FSM action is going to be um next fsm index right so it's going to be fsm index and offset is going to be just use size there we go right and so basically the offset will tell whether you want to go to the right or not and here in fsm column we're going to have fsm action and now i have no idea how the fuck we're going to actually display this entire thing because before displaying the state of fsm was rather easy but now uh eh? i don't know so yeah and i've said uh, I'm, i want to actually make offset i32 in case uh it wants to be negative maybe at some point we're gonna have a feature that will uh result in going yes we will need that we will need that because we're gonna have some sort of like groups uh hello or world Right, because while trying to match this thing, you may realize that this is not a hello, 
and maybe you will have to go back certain amount of characters to try this thing again yes so basically it wants to actually move left and right so it's not a linear process actually so it's a program that operates on a read-only Turing machine that needs to move left and right uh, so if you add an ability to write a character you would get an actual Turing machine and given infinite uh, infinite string you will actually get a Turing complete programming language can you actually make regular expressions Turing complete by allowing them to write into the string? <laughs> Wait a fucking second. Oh shit, this gives me so many fucking ideas. I love this. Oh man, I, I love shit like that. What the fuck? Oh, what's this fucking implemented? I'm not even sure if we'll be able to implement all of the regular expression features, but this is very fucking educational. I love it. I wish I went to a better university so I could learn that uh, when I was younger. Unfortunately, I was very unlucky to be born in a third world country. So anyways, so this is going to be offset. Um, and what I want to be able to do, I want to be able to actually print this entire thing. Uh, let me think, let me think, let me think. So when we're dumping this shite, uh, right, so here is a symbol and uh, this symbol is going to have the next state so this is going to be something like this this is the next state and the offset is going to be yeah let's just put it like this so this is that uh, next uh -huh. colon uh, ts symbol offset uh, and unfortunately it's not gonna align properly i wish it was aligning properly but okay so uh, we probably also want to have like a empty FSM action, right? So it's going to be something like impl, um, yeah, impl FSM action new. Uh, uh -huh. Maybe I can do something like default. Yeah, 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 I should be able to do something like default. Uh, derive default. Uh, here comes the rust. Uh, and so this one is going to be default uh, new. I think it could be just default. Uh, FSM. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So here's what we're doing here. Um, so when we need to compile this entire thing, um, uh, do we need to update the character? I think when you reach the uh, end of the line, like yeah, end of the line. Maybe we do need to update the character. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it does make sense to update the character. Okay, FSM action. Uh, FSM action is going to be like this. So this is the next, and then offset is going to be one. There we go. So this is how we're going to approach that. Uh, all right. So when we have something like this, uh, FSM action. Uh -huh. um, next is that. And offset is that cool. And maybe uh -huh. let me do it like that. Okay, so what I'm doing right now, I'm doing compiler assisted refactoring, uh, meaning that uh, I just modified the uh, signature of like definition of one of the structures and that created a trail of compilation errors and I'm just following compilation errors until I fix all of them and this is how I will eventually refactor everything. All right, so T next is that. That means the T next uh, should be N minus one. All right. But what's interesting is that it needs to maintain its offset. Yeah, offset is going to be as usual. But if it's supposed to fail, if the T next is supposed to fail, T next becomes actually next, but offset becomes zero. Right, so you see, uh, usually we're gonna just offset to like right by, by one, but if the loop fails, right, loop fails, we're gonna try to match that character again, but on the next state. Yes. Uh, next compilation error. Next compilation error. This one is going to be FSM action. Uh, next. Um, next, next offset. Um, you know, it would be actually super, like, it would be a little bit more ergonomic if uh, Rust separated fields with semicolon, not comma. You know why? 
uh, because then it will make it easier to refactor things a little bit. Look, right, so you had a single value, right? You had, you had a single value before, but you turn it into a structure. So now, uh, if the fields of the structure were separated by semicolon, uh, you could do something like FSM action, right? Put it like that and modify nothing. Literally, you would just only write, wrap it into FSM action and you wouldn't need to modify anything and uh, just add next. Rubik actually kind of convenient, but I mean, it just depends on what kind of tools you use, right? Uh, it all depends on kind of tools you use, but uh, I suppose in my specific tools, it would be actually kind of convenient, not gonna lie. Okay, so, uh, and here I should probably not forget to put a semicolon in here. All right, so here we do a match. Now, so because we introduced the offset, this kind of thing is is not going to work anymore, right? This kind of thing is not going to work anymore. We need to maintain the state of the head, right? So head now is um, a separate variable in here. So, and I suppose we need to um, refactor this loop into a while loop, right? A while, um, and by the way, we can actually put this entire stuff in, in the while loop, a while state. Um, is greater than zero and state actually let's actually wrap it around so it's going to be zero state and state is um mm -mm -mm -mm. while state is greater than zero and then state less than the size of the states the amount of states what we're going to be doing in here we're going to be um uh we're going to be figuring out the the action that we need to take right so here's going to be the action so and the action is located in state and character right so that means i have to take the input head and turn it into u size and there you go we have an action and the action affects the state so now uh, we assign the state to the next one and the head is plus action offset uh, there we go. So this is how we're going to refactor this entire loop, right? And if we reach uh, the state zero or um, some successful state, uh, yeah, uh, we're going to return things correspondingly. Also, I have to be a little bit careful with this kind of stuff. So I don't want the head to um, sort of overflow or something like that. But if it overflows, there are range checks here. So the, the application will just crash. So I don't really care about that. I only care about these conditions because they usually indicate the end of the program, the end of the FSM program. So let's see what's gonna happen in here. So input, uh, all right. Uh, oh shit. So maybe one of the things I need to do in here, I need to actually take something like uh, charts and I need to convert characters into a vector of some sort. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm, so let's put it like this. It's going to be chars and it's going to be input chars uh, collect uh, vec. Eh. I hope it's going to work. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Input string using slice index slice index so uh, what i need to do is just convert oh yeah yeah so i forgot to update input to, to chars yes that's what i forgot to do uh, anything else action offset okay this one is interesting so maybe because of that the head oh my god all right so that means i need to take the head convert it to i32 add the offset and convert it back to uh, use size. So is it going to be happy now? It is in fact happy. All right, so, um, and the next thing I need to do after I matched everything, right, I need to add the last event and the last event is going to be the FSM uh, line end. So let me copy paste this entire thing and see what's going to happen. Um, right, so yet again, this is going to be FSM line end, um, and that should be all right, actually. That should be all right. Uh -huh. Do we have anything else? Head, uh, well, assigned, assigned is never read. Are you fucking sure about that? Well, yeah, it is true. Okay. Uh, so FSM action is not copyable. Let's make it copyable. 
Anything else? It has to be clonable before I can make it copyable. All right, now we're fucking talking. And ABC worked. Look at that. ABC worked and ABCD also worked because it actually matched the prefix and we didn't put a new line in there. Right, as you can see, so ABC and ABCD. So if I add a new line in there, if I add a new line in there, uh, so it will completely break. Nice. <laughs> uh index out of bounds at 96 okay let's take a look why the fuck did it break i'm not quite sure um uh, panicked at and what's interesting is that it panicked at abc hmm it panicked at abc and it panicked specifically here um but without a new line it worked perfectly i don't know what's going on here i don't know but uh, another thing that i wanted to test i wanted to test whether it will match a a b c right because uh now the first uh thing actually loops into itself and as you can see it does match uh, a a b c right and it probably will match as many of them as you want it will probably also match b c look at that so let's see yeah, yeah it matches b c a a b c a a b c so the the amount of a's here is like as many as you want oh and look at that here is the state machine and I suppose, yeah, if it fails, it basically loops into itself. Uh, otherwise, it just uh, goes to the next one and so on and so forth. Alrighty, and that's that's cool. So we're starting to have regular expressions in here. What the fuck? Uh, all right. So and A, B, C also matches perfectly in here. B, C, D, all that doesn't doesn't match at all. All of that does not match at all. Mm -mm. But the problem that we have in here is why when I add a new line in here, right, it crashes with some bullshit. Uh, and it crashes also on BC, right? So it's uh, 96 and 44, right? So it's going to be 44 somewhere here. So it cannot take the characters. We can try to print those characters just to see what the hell is going on in here. So this one is going to be some sort of a head. Mm hmm uh okay and head was uh essentially fine then it was zero zero one two um and i suppose oh yeah we need to start uh, we need to stop when the head is done right when the head is less than input len or maybe let's actually put it into n right so it's gonna be uh, n um well, maybe something like this chars then so we don't have to recalculate it over and over again yeah i think that's what i need to do yeah yeah, yeah. okay there we go. so i completely forgot to just do that uh all right so all of that is working and abcd doesn't work anymore right because we added a new line in here we're capable of compiling these kind of regular expressions look at that holy shit so but how would you implement something like plus right so if you have um let's say a plus right so that means this thing has to be encountered at least one time to be fair in that particular case i think we can just expand this entire stuff into a a star right so just expand it to a a star and that's it mm. so it should be pretty straightforward i think Essentially, we can even do that from left to right. If you encounter plus, you take the previous uh, the previous column, duplicate it, and then you do the usual procedure as you do with the star, but on a duplicated line. Yeah, plus is essentially star, but on a duplicated line. That's, that's fucking perfect. That's actually pretty fucking cool. All right. So should be relatively easy to add. Um, let's quickly do that. All right, so we're running out of time. So I think I'm going to add plus and uh, I think that's going to be it uh, for the day. Okay. So, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Hmm. Though, when we add a new column, we'll have to kind of like shift the... Um, Shift the indices, right? We'll, we'll definitely have to shift the indices somehow. Uh, all right. 
So uh, I'm taking FSM CS last. Uh, maybe I'm gonna uh, take it as mutable or something. I don't know. I'm gonna unwrap it and I'm gonna clone it. Right. I'm gonna clone it and I'm gonna push in it. Uh, I'm gonna push it back. Right. So this is kind of gonna duplicate it. I wonder if vector in Rust allows you to just duplicate things on top. Right. So if I take a look at the vector. Uh, Duplicate. Okay. Do you have just duplicate? There is dupe. There is a dedupe. Uh, is it dedupe? L le dupe. <laughs> I don't know what is dedupe. Uh, duplicate. Uh, partition dedupe. Uh, moves all consequent repeated elements, returns to slices, duplicates. Uh, it's duplicates actually. So I'm not sure if that's what I want in here. I don't think it, that's what I want. All right, so that should be enough, I suppose. So I'm just creating this thing and that should be it. So after that, after after that, let me see, let me see. Um, so we're iterating through the last one, right? We're iterating through the last one. Um, if we encounter N, um, if we encounter n oh man this, this one is going to be a little bit difficult all right it's, it's a little bit mind bending uh it's a little bit mind bending so i'll have to be i have to actually draw that uh i think i'll have to actually draw that unfortunately so if you have something like a right so you have a column um uh right so the a is probably located somewhere here uh and you have a state i in here um so each individual state in here that fails is going to redirect to zero, right? But this one is going to be i plus one, uh, right? So, and then you duplicate this thing and move it to the place of i plus one, right? And move it to the place of i plus one. So that means here, if you encounter i plus one, if you encounter i plus one, you should not even touch it because it's already re redirected to itself right it's already redirected to itself um and if you encounter zero right if you encounter zero you have to redirect zero to i plus two right you have to redirect it to i plus two to basically do the next one mm -hmm. that's actually very interesting and uh the question is what is going to be n i suppose because of that i'll have to put uh, the n like this okay uh so n is basically the state there all right if you encounter n uh you don't do anything right uh just leave it as it is uh just, just leave it as it is it's already uh looped it's already looped if it's equal to zero uh what we'll have to do in here we'll have to do n plus one and offset is going to be zero and this one is going to be unreachable for now and i think that's that is pretty much it that is pretty much it let's try to recompile this entire thing and does it even work does it even work no it doesn't um so expected struct found fsm pointer uh can i just dereference this entire thing and just clone it maybe i have to yeah i wanted to just clone it just clone it move occurs because uh, for some column which does not implement copy okay so maybe i need to make it clonable yeah this is one of the things that probably need to do i need to make it clonable right so this thing has to be clonable uh will it work okay i see maybe that's what i need to do in here all right all right all right all right all right so if i replace star right if i mm, Max is so slow. Okay. If I replace star with a plus, the BC case won't succeed anymore, right? As you can see, like the only reason it succeeds is because it's a star. If I add plus in there, it's not going to succeed anymore, hopefully. Uh, two, 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 two. So uh, let me see. And, and that's precisely what happened. A, B, C, A, A, B, C, A, 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 B, C succeed, but not uh, B, C. B, C does not succeed anymore. There we go. 
there we go. Uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, okay, I guess we managed to implement um, managed to implement very simple like regular expressions, a subset of regular expressions. We have end line dot um, star plus and uh, just regular characters. It would be really interesting to actually implement groups because this is where it gets like really recursive. Right, because now to compile this group, I'll have to compile it to a smaller FSM. And once I get the smaller FSM, I'll have to wire it up into a bigger FSM. And if you have a lot of nastiness, it's basically going to be like sort of like a tree of FSMs wired together. And for instance, failure inside of the group should not fail the whole regular expression. It should only fail like, you know, inside of it and go outside of it because it's going to be needed if you have like these sort of things. Um, so it would be interesting to compile this kind of stuff, but unfortunately we don't have time for that for today. So maybe next time. So leave a comment if you, if you want me to do another part of this uh, regular expression development where we're going to implement capture groups, because I'm really interested in this kind of stuff. I'm just not sure if uh, anyone else is interested. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I didn't expect this to be so recreational and educational. Right, so apparently there is no mystery in regular expressions because uh, there's like everyone treats regular expressions like a you know a big box, right? Uh, nobody knows how they work. They, everybody just use them. But if you look into them, they're not that hard, right? So you just have this small virtual machine, like finite state machine, and you take the source code and you compile it down to the assembly of that virtual machine. And that virtual machine is so specialized, it just iterates over your string, just moves in right, left and right, and just like matches and answers the question. That's Actually, pretty cool. It's almost like developing a language. Uh, so yeah, I recently started to, to develop my own programming language and uh, I really enjoyed it. And maybe that's why I find uh, compiling regular expressions so interesting. Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. Um, let's actually put it on a GitHub, I suppose. Um, so how am I gonna call it? Um, so it's gonna be a rejects. Uh, rejects so rs um how how i don't know um i don't know it's it's not really like usable regular expressions in production it's more of a, like a prototype uh pepex <laughs> pepex rs so the library is going to uh, be called pepex um so and uh, we have a lot of stuff in here um, because I also want to share this turnstile thingy uh, with everyone. Maybe it's not going to be a library. Uh, maybe it's going to be just like, you know, the one of the repos with the artifacts of the stream. Yeah, I think it makes sense to me. So here's the main. We don't really need this thing anymore. Uh, and uh, there we go. All right. So I'm going to make a quickly uh, a git repo. Uh, then... Huh? Where is the turn style? Oh, it's already... Okay, I forgot that I already turned it into a repo. Okay. So, <laughs> I already forgot what I did. Uh, okay, add uh, rejects uh, example. Add rejects example. Uh, and here, uh, maybe it makes sense to rename it to rejects uh, stream. Uh, right, and this is going to be rejects stream artifacts. So let's go to a certain organization and let's create a repo called rejects stream. Um, rejects stream artifacts, artifacts. And uh, we're not going to make it public, by the way, so not to spoil anyone. Uh, so, and let's just copy it like this. So it's going to be add uh, origin, uh -huh. set it to, to default. Uh, and I'm going to push that right into the repo. Um, mm, 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 mm. All right, this is fucking fun, mate. This is fucking fun. And I'm going to put the link to this thing in the description as well. Rejects a repo. Rejects source code uh, repo. Might as well just go like this. All right, so we actually managed to... I didn't expect to actually manage to implement something interesting. But apparently it wasn't that hard. This was a very demystifying experience, right? 
it was very demystifying for me. It's actually very simple, like lookup table, and it's just yeah. Uh, you just take this small thing and compile it to this kind of table. I'm not sure if this is the optimal repre representation for the regular expressions, but it looks like one. This entire table doesn't take that much memory. It's actually pretty simple and straightforward. So I don't know. Looks good to me. Looks good to me. And it works as expected. Uh, we don't support groups, but again, let me know in the comments if uh, I should make the second part of this kind of st stuff. Anyway, that's it for today, boys and girls. That's it for today. Thanks, everyone, who's watching me right now. I really appreciate it. Uh, have a good one, and I see you tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, I think I think tomorrow is Monday, right? Or is it Sunday? Tomorrow is Sunday. That means tomorrow we're going to do a game development in C++ with OpenGL. Hopefully, if something changes, I'll let you know in the Discord. So, and yeah, I got to go. I'm going to go. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, I love you all. Mwah.